All right, friends, this is lesson five, Zero to Hero, uh, governance and ALM mentorship uh, classes. Today we have The Return of Mariano. That that would be a cool movie title. The Return, Return of, of the of Jedi. The... <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is right. Well, Mariano, thank you so much for, for being here again and uh, teaching us My some pleasure. of the cool stuff that you do. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the floor to you so we don't waste any more time. Uh, sit back, guys, and prepare for this one. I know it's going to be a good, a good lesson. All right. Yeah. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Well, you know what I realized yesterday? I didn't even introduce myself because I was coming running on the march, and I really didn't uh, know what was going on. So my name is Mariano Gomez. I think that's important for you to know, for whatever reason, and. Uh, I am a Microsoft MVP, 15 years running now, and um, most of those have been on, or the majority, all of it has been on the um, on the business uh, application side. I started with uh, Dynamics GP, then I moved into Power Platform, and now I'm doing Business Central. So you know, just a um, a uh, background there for you. Um, I, I'm the CPO of a company called McCorma. We are actually a, a virtual company with employees all over. So um, I don't get to go to an office, which is pretty freaking cool if you ask me. So anyways, um, let me share my screen and we jump into this. Today, we're going to talk about um, pipelines, deployment pipelines and release pipelines, pipelines in general. But before we even get to that, I actually want to talk to you about a few things that I thought you should know before we jump into it. Okay, so my audience right here today is not a developer's audience. You are developers, yes, but you are majority of you are citizen developers. If you are a professional developer, you probably haven't, uh, haven't run into the concept of pipelines and then you have terms that are, uh, you know, that are pretty much foreign to you, like continuous integration, continuous delivery. We talked about briefly about that yesterday, but I want to make sure that you get the full picture, the, the, the 50,000 foot level picture, so we can dive into how this ties out into uh, Power Platform. And I'll try to do some demos on the um, on the fly. If it doesn't work. Uh, we will just switch over to something that I have pre-built already. So uh, the 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 idea here is for you to to get the idea. The implementation side, there are many approaches to how you implement this, and mine doesn't happen to be any better than anybody else's. So I want to make sure that that's pretty clear. Um, but the idea here is that uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery. It's just a process. It's a develop a software development process that teams follow to basically deliver code more frequently and more reliably. So if you think about frequency and real reliability, that pretty much boils down to one or two um, methodologies that are very uh, similar or that are actually driven to to the drive that type of process, which is um, in software development, we know it as agile methodology. Okay, so you want to be agile. That's basically what this is about. Okay, and agile in all sense means that uh, first you have the integration aspect, the continuous integration aspect, which um, is making sure that you're delivering code uh, or integrating code changes and updates from all your team members as fast as possible into the um, into the development process, right? And that's, that's that part. So you're pushing code as fast as you can, you're detecting bugs, you fix them, fixing them fast, as fast as you can, okay? What is the aim of this whole thing? The aim of this whole thing is to basically uh, be able to release code faster. So that basically drives down to the other part, right? Which is continuous delivery. So as soon as we're getting code tested, fixed, or, or fixed and tested, we are basically pushing out to production as fast as we can. Production um, environments or production um, uh, platforms where your code is being consumed by end users, right? 
uh, all this whole aspect that you see here forms part of what you have known or what you have been taught to be DevOps. You've heard this concept around, uh, it's thrown around very, um, very randomly, but it's just a part of the, uh, a part of the entire DevOps process, right? Um, so now the differences between the two, well, continuous delivery is basically the interim stop, the, the step to get software between um, uh, the integration portion and the deployment. So basically between development and deploying the code, that's your delivery um, cycle, okay? Um, and um, yeah, that's basically it. Really, if you wanna read anything more, I'm gonna send you this Cisco link. I think um, you know Microsoft has tons of documentation, but I want you to see that it's not only Microsoft who sits here and think about these things. Okay, this is not a Microsoft concept. This is a software engineering concept that um, that that uh, many teams across multiple industries, across multiple software developers, um, multiple systems integrators uh, follow. Okay, so. That's kind of the preamble, really. And um, and I kind of wanted to uh, get that out of the way so we can focus on what really concerns us here today, which is um, how does pipelines fit into this whole concept? Well, uh, keep in mind that pipeline is just a process. It's a software-driven process, so we're going to see how that works. Okay. I'm not going to get into the, into the how these things happen, but know that you guys have been through a trajectory where you've seen how a solution work. You know, you understand the basic concepts of solutions. Yesterday, we went through um, another round of showing you how, um, uh, what was that yesterday, Victor? My mind is kind of blo uh, blurry right now. Uh, we looked at uh, CLI yesterday. Yes. So we look at the Power Apps uh, command, uh, Power Platform command line interface. And, um, you know, we saw some aspects of that that are outside of uh, development platform. Now you will see how some of those concepts that you already um, learned apply to a complete uh, software engineering cycle. So that's the kind of stuff that people like me spend days and hours thinking about and how we improve our delivery um, methodology for um, for uh, Power Platform applications and Power Platform components in general. Uh, that's kind of in the realm of that same thing that we've been talking about. And yesterday, I kind of tangentially touched on some of these things, but today you're going to see it in a little bit more detail, hopefully without too many hiccups. So we're going to go ahead and talk about it. Okay. I have a solution. This solution um, that I created is called Zero to Hero, lo and behold, right? So in this uh, solution, what I have is a uh, budget tracker application. Very simple, and I'm not going to make this complicated. Yes, you can add chatbots, you can add cloud flows, you can have all sort of different objects, tables from Dataverse. The bottom line is everything resides inside the solution. Okay? And for now, we're going to uh, work with this budget track app. All right, this is in a development environment called uh, Mekorma IT development. In addition to that, what I've actually gone ahead and do is I've gone and set up a, an, a, an application user registration to um, uh, my, an application user that is gonna be used to basically communicate my uh, Azure DevOps environment and my Power Platform environment. You might say, okay, but why do you need that? Okay. Um, the simple answer to that is if you are using multi factor authentication, you need application users because everything is done via a, a um, via tokens, right? So between the two systems, there's no, there's no way you can authenticate from one environment to another without having some sort of communication mechanism yeah. between the two. Okay. Uh, I hey, see you Mariana? have your hands up, Peter. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Can you can you make this um the the screen? Uh, yeah, bigger? sorry, it always happens that way, right? It's Thank you, all sir. good. Thank you. It's Thank all good. You. And then the other comment I would make is what Mariana is talking about in terms of uh, uh, application user here. 
I don't know if you recall, if you saw lesson one of the CLI or the beginning of the lesson, we talked about creating an authentication entry, which it required me to add my user to be able to connect to the environment and also to be able to extract a solution or export a solution and import to another environment. Mm -hmm. So what Marianne is referring to here with an app user is to be able to do the same, but using almost like a service account. Correct. One that this pipeline will be able to authenticate against and then uh, you don't have to enter the creds. I have a video that I'm going to put on the playlist as well on how to create those registration. You can refer to that video once you're ready to to roll with your own pipelines. All right, Mariano, all yours. Yep, that's perfect. Uh, any, by the way, guys, anything that you want to ask in in line with what I'm uh, showing, by all means, don't wait till the end. Just ask. I don't care if we have to come back for a session, a second session. I prefer to go with um, with a speed that will allow you guys to comprehend what we're talking about than just rushing through a topic. So, um, yeah, by the way, Victor, that's an offer if, if you see like time is running up. Uh, so uh, we have the um, the app registration here, and then you're going to ask yourself, well, I see you actually have a power platform registration for this application user that you created. Where did that come from? So quickly here, I'm going to go to my Azure portal. And that Azure portal is where you actually do your app registration. And basically what you're saying is I'm setting up a permission. So if I go to app registration, uh, let me see what that is. I just do here. Um, app registration there we go so if i go to app registrations this is the power platform registration that i created and all that is is nothing more than basically creating the in summary the secrets and the credentials that i'm going to use to authenticate against my power platform environment and setting up the permissions that are going to be acceptable um, for those apis so basically i have user impersonation and read and that's done through uh, Microsoft Graph and, and what's not. So um, that's really everything else that you need. And here are the secrets that I created. And that secret is basically passed in by the environment. Uh, once you have the secret, you're good to go. And let me um, let me increase this in this font size as well so you can see. OK, so that's it. Um, and that is only required, again, I clarify, that is only required if you have an environment where you're using multi-factor authentication. And we'll talk about that in a second, okay? So then um, once you've done those two things, once you have your app registration, once you have your um, app user set up in your uh, Power Platform environment under your admin center, then um, that's it. We have everything we need to be able to connect to this Power Platform environment that we just saw this now. All right. So let's go over to Azure DevOps. And this is where things get to start to um, move into the ream a little bit of um, what professional developers tend to deal with. OK? Before I get into setting up a new project, one thing I want to call your attention to is the marketplace. Because this is where, if nothing else, this is where you should start. Okay, in the marketplace we have um, we have. Um, let me see if I can if this thing will respond. If not, we'll go back to where we were. But in the marketplace, if you type a uh, power platform and then you hit search you will see that we have the Power Platform build tools. OK, this is key for you to understand. The Power Platform build tools are nothing more than a collection of, um, I would say, components that actually leverage the XRM toolkit. OK, now this might sound esoteric, but the XRM toolkit is the exact same toolkit used by the Power Platform command line interface that we saw about yesterday. So they are both built on the same framework. Where does all this stuff come from? Well, 
all the Power Platform Toolkit and the XRM, I'm sorry, what all the XRM Toolkit comes from the Dynamics 365 um, CRM sales environment at some point in time. Okay, that was all created over there. That whole concept of environments of, um, uh, you know, please zoom in. Yeah, I will zoom in. Thank you. And please call me out on it if you need um, if you need me to. But all the all the toolkit, the XRM toolkit, comes from that whole uh, legacy stuff from Dynamics 365. Okay, so this is actually important to keep in mind because anything you do here as well, any extension that you create, for example, model-driven applications, all the stuff is from that Dynamics 365 environment. Okay. So that actually that, that actually is great because that um, now you're starting to tie the different pieces together. Although we know we're talking about uh, something here, uh, totally unrelated. Okay, so let's go back to my Visual Studio um, or my Azure DevOps environment. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a new project, and this new project is going to be called um, I don't know. Let's call it CI/CD for lack of uh, imagination. Uh, pipelines, because that's what we'll be talking about today. I'm going to set this up as a private project, uh, just so nobody else can see it in my organization at this point. But this is going to be the most important thing here is for you to make sure that this is a Git version controlled, and that is an agile project. Okay, that's it. You hit create, and now you have a project where you can. Um, where you can move information uh, that basically will be initially source code and the pipelines that we're going to set up. All right. The first thing you must do when you set up a new project in Azure DevOps is configure your repos. Okay. Your repos are nothing more than where you're going to store your source code. Okay. So here I have this. I should add a README file. And once I'm done, I'm going to hit initialize here. Okay, good, great. Now I have a CI CD pipeline repo, right? What am I going to use this repo for? Remember anybody? Store the source files. Exactly. That's exactly what it's used for. It's going to be used to store your source code. Basically, that's what it is. All right. So the source code goes inside the repository. How are we going to get the source code that is in the Power Platform environment across to uh, this particular um, repository? Question for the group. Are you going to sign so in? there, there okay. goes there goes the the first lesson, right? We have to create a pipeline. Pipelines. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. We're going to create a pipeline. But before I even start with the pipeline. I need to go back to my project because here are two other things that you are going to have to learn. Um, when I set up a project, there are a couple other things that I need to do to allow uh, certain things to happen. If you go on the project settings, okay, the first thing here that you will see is this thing called service connections. Service connection. yeah. Those service connections are exactly what are going to allow me to now communicate. I've established the mechanism before, but the service connections are actually what are going to allow me to communicate and authenticate against my other environments in Power Platform. So I'm going to set up a new service connection, and this is going to be a... Um, so for all intents and purposes, if I type like Power Platform in here, Right. This is going to be my power platform service connection. So let's go with everything else now. What, sir, what is the server URL? Well, if I come back around here, this you will find under your admin center. And if you go to environments and I look at that um, development environment that I was talking about, this is the environment URL. OK, um, it has this funky org name that crm.dynamics.com. And if you are confused about it, any doubt you have, just make sure that your environment name will, or just know that your environment name will be preceded by, uh, or will be suffixed by crm.dynamics.com. And you can get it from your, um, 
from your admin center. So that's exactly what I'm going to stick in here. Uh, where are we at? Over here. Okay. Nice. Now it asks me for the tenant ID. Okay, the tenant ID then is exactly what you would think it is. So I can find that from multiple places, but my preferred place to find it is right here in the Power Platform, uh, pardon me, in the Microsoft Azure um, uh, portal where I have my app registration. So here is my um, uh, tenant ID, director ID or tenant ID. I'm sure you can find it obviously on um, on the Power Platform environment as well. So, but I just like to pull it from there. Now, and now the application ID. The application ID, because I think I've used this one before, um, is probably the same, but if not, we will figure it out. So I'm just gonna come over here and copy the application ID. That's exactly what I'm putting over here. And I can tell already it might be different. No, nope, so it's the same one. So that means that the secret I'm using is probably already in use. So all I have to do now is give this a service connection name development, right? That's my service connection name. And then I'm gonna grant access, make sure you grant access and permission to all pipelines. Boom, that's it. Okay. Once again, this is only needed if you are actually doing um, MFA in your environment, because otherwise you will you can set up a standard um, service connection that re, that only uses OAuth, and that OAuth will ask you for your credentials. Hopefully, you're not using your credentials; you're using a uh, user account that is a service account in your environment and a password that is set up for that service account. Questions so far? Okay, moving on. All right, so we have our dev environment, we have our, um, our service connection, we have our repo, and we have now the ability to set up a pipeline. And that initial pipeline is what's gonna get me into, um, and get my source code into the repository, okay? All right, so I'm going to hit create pipeline here. I'm sorry, Mariana, I, 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 I was speaking on mute. Quick question that I had. Uh, up to now, is there a license baseline that is required uh, to like, create a project in the pipeline or even the service connection? Is there a base? I'm sorry, is there a license that is required for um, creating a pipeline? Is that what you said? Correct. Even you know up to where you are right now, creating a project pipeline. Uh, That's a very good question. So yeah. the theory goes something like this, and please you, do your research and make sure you can confirm this. Microsoft offers Azure DevOps for up to five users for free, for up to five concurrent developers for free. Anything over that, I think you have to license and you have to pay for it. Okay. So up to five users, I believe you covered. Anything over that, you have to um, you have to buy uh, developer licenses. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that that confers still Mariano to X yep. to use DevOps uh, overall, not the pipelines, but to use DevOps. That is the cost. But I remember maybe a year ago they were introducing costs for pipelines. Mm -hmm. But there was there was a channel that you could use. You could send an email and say, hey, can you unlock this for this one pipeline or two pipelines that I'm going to use in my environment? I'm not sure if they made it part of the UI where you don't have to, to email anybody. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there are additional costs for the pipelines uh, users. OK, but it's something like you said, maybe something for us to to look into down yep. the line. But for DevOps alone, it's up to five users free of charge. And then if you have Visual Studio subscription, uh, those users don't pay a license. You have access to any DevOps project for free. Yeah. So there you go. Victor just said it. Um, so I think, uh, I think you know, and, and you're right. 
one of the things is the pipelines, all these things, pipelines, environments, repos, boards, etc. That is all stuff that is a part of um, Azure DevOps. Um, I don't know, as Victor probably mentioned this now, I don't know if you have to license pipelines separately, but please, please reach out to your um, Microsoft representative or your uh, CSP and find out those things. I, you know, I, I use these things. I don't worry much about the license because I happen to be an MVP just like Victor and they give us all this stuff for free. So I don't think about it. All right. Um, the other thing now is note that here is asking you where's your code. OK, so um, my code is in, I think, Azure repo Git, right? And now it's actually putting me to select the um, repository. So this is the repository that we previously created. It's my CD, C, CI CD pipeline repository. Okay. Now, um, unfortunately, there are no templates that we can use. So we have to create, use a starter pipeline to, um, to basically create our, um, our pipeline. Now, keep in mind again that this pipeline specifically is going to move code from Azure, from our development environment into the repository. Now, a couple things to keep in mind here. Because you're working with solutions, right? If you are, if you are going to use the future in the available today with, um, Power Apps that allows you to do uh, co-authoring. Co-authoring actually allows you to set up a repository on Azure DevOps. And in fact, co-authoring doesn't work if you don't have a repository either on Azure DevOps or GitHub, or I'm sorry, or, or yeah, GitHub, okay? So the bottom line here is whether you're using co-authoring or whether you're gonna go through this route, you end up in the same place, okay? You're gonna end up having to set up a pipeline to do uh, the work that um, that you see I'm going to do here in a second, all right? So here, uh, this is a start starter pipeline. Effectively, what you're seeing here is YAML code. So I am not a YAML developer, and I'm sure a lot of you are not YAML developers. And second, I don't want to have to learn YAML. So we'll show you something else first before I make some changes here. The trigger here is none. Okay, that's going to be your trigger. Your VM image, hopefully, is going to be Windows latest. So we don't want to use Ubuntu. If you have a, an Ubuntu server, that's up to you. But most of it, uh, of the images that we want to create to run our pipelines are, um, are Windows based. Okay. Um, I don't need the stuff that says uh, script here, display name, none of the stuff. I don't need this. Okay, this is just uh, noise. And uh, th that's where now, where we start to do things. So I want to call your attention now to this um, over here on the, are you guys seeing this well? Or do I have to zoom in a little bit more? But over here on the right of the screen, you have the show assistant. Well, show assistant, what it does is, it does allow me now to uh, invoke any of the Power Platform build tools that I actually uh, installed previously from the marketplace. So once you install the Power Platform build tools from the marketplace, these, these options, these tasks that are part of the pipeline show up for you. So you don't have to type YAML code. Now, if you are great typing YAML, fantastic, but know that you don't have to do it. Now, the first thing that we need to do is make sure or the first step that we need to invoke is the power platform uh, tools installer okay this is gonna be um this is gonna sound really cool because those power platform tools installers this one is nothing more than the same power platform command line interface components that you installed so once you download them in visual studio tools this is kind of like the same thing but on azure devops right so you're installing pretty much a, a set or a superset or a subset of those same Power Platform Play tools, 
And where are those going to get installed? Well, they're going to get installed on the agent on, that is going to be created based on this v latest VM image called Windows Latest uh, that we're going to use. So basically pipelines, if you think about it a little bit, what, uh, what happens behind the scenes when you run a pipeline is a virtual machine is provisioned for you on in Azure, and all those tools are going to get downloaded to that virtual machine, and now you actually have that virtual machine ready to um, uh, to that is going to run in the cloud, ready to start doing all the other tasks. So keep in mind uh, one thing. So if you guys were the ones doing this stuff, um, doing this stuff on manually, right? After installing the tools, what what would you do to get your solution out of a power platform? What would you normally have to do? You would have to export it, right? So this is the yeah. same thought process that we're going to follow here. But instead of us having to do that stuff manually, now we have tools in Azure DevOps that are going to do that automatically for you. So now we're going to have to run the power platform export, right? Solution. Here it is. That's what we're going to do. We're going to run the Power Platform export solution. Now, keep in mind once again that my environment is fully MFA'd. So I have to select a service principal client secret that supports MFA. And now I can select that development environment service connection that I created here. Very, very cool. Now, um, the environment URL is going to be the build tools that. Um, that uh, environment URL, so I don't have to worry about that. The solution name. All right, here's where things start to get interesting. I normally recommend you do not, and I actually have to stress this, do not hard code your solutions names in your pipelines. For that, we have variables, okay? And I can set up a new variable called solution name. And as you can see right here, it's actually giving me what that stuff is going to look like. And then the value of that solution name is now if I come over here, that solution is called zero to hero. Okay, that's what I'm going to type in here. Okay. And we can keep the value secret. You can decide to do all sort of things. So the name doesn't show up in the um, in the. Uh, what do you call that in the in the debug of the of the, when the pipeline executes? I mean, that's the kind of security you have. I'm not concerned about that right now, but I'm actually giving you what that is. So that solution name is exactly what I'm going to type, type here or paste here. I copied it and I pasted it in here. And then um, the solution file. This is actually something that you guys will uh, also come to learn is the name of the zip file that I want the, uh, created when the agent gets exported. But again, I'm not going to hard code that. So what I'm going to do here is I want that to go to the build uh, build that artifact staging directory. And by the way, if you need help on all these uh, predefined uh, system variables, uh, there is a whole library of it uh, on, on Azure DevOps help. Okay, so you don't have to memorize this stuff. I just know it almost by heart. It goes to my build that artifact staging directory. And then I'm going to prefix that, the solution name. That's it. So when that gets exported on the agent, it creates a um, zero to hero that zip name solution. Okay. Note here that you have the ability to export that as a managed solution. Right now, uh, that's not something we're going to deal with. You can also, um, especially because we are bringing in code from our source code repository or from Power Platform, we don't want to actually get it out as a managed solution. Otherwise, it would going to be all jumbled up when we bring it into, into our repository. Now, the target version, uh, I, I normally would skip this as well um, for this explanation, but know that you can version the exports as well. And um, basically, really, that's it. Uh, there's some advanced options here that you can visit as well. You can override the local solution that's it. 
a zip file, you can override, you can export the customization settings, a whole bunch of other things, okay? Um, Outlook synchronization settings, those are things that you can do from your Power Platform environment, especially if you already have uh, those things set up. Calendar settings, sales, relationship roles, all those kind of things can be exported. I'm gonna hit add here now, and as you can see, a task is created uh, with um, in YAML code, that basically tells me my authentication type, the uh, Power Platform SPN, which I'm gonna use. Uh, that's nothing more than the service um, provider, the name of the solution, the solution file, and the rest is added automatically for me, okay? Any question up to now? All right, but that, that creates a zip file. So what do you guys think I need to do with that zip file now? Save it to source control, maybe? No, not the zip file. I need the files inside the zip file. So that's going to be all my JSON files, all everything else that I am creating, right? So here is my uh, next task. But in order to get the files out of the zip file, what do you guys think I need to do? Unpack it. Unpack yeah, the unzip. zip file. Yeah. Right? So for that, there is a Power Platform unpack. Um, let me see. Yeah, there should be an unpack solution here. Let me see, unpack solution, where is that? So there's the pack, the unpack should be somewhere down here. There we go, unpack solution. So which is the solution file? Well, the solution file is gonna be the same output over here, right? So all I have to do is hack this out from here and put it as input to this task. So now I also want you to start thinking about this stuff, right? It means that the pretty much the output from the previous step is almost the input for the subsequent step, okay? The target folder, here's where we're gonna get also creative. I want that to be put in the same build that sources directory and solution name and the type of solution is gonna be unmanaged. That's all I need. I don't need anything else really to put into this information, okay? Um, you can process Canvas apps. I don't know these options were added just recently, so I haven't explored them, but just know that you can do some other, you can add some other options to this. And um, typically I would suggest you allow overriding of any existing file. And that's what gets added here. So I think this got jumbled up a little bit. Let me, um, yeah, because I had highlighted it. So let me repeat that step for one second here. Unpack, unpack, unpack. Sorry about that, unpack solution. And then we're gonna go back and select the build that artifact staging solution name here as input file, the target folder. We're gonna unpack that too to um, build that sources, that, um, that solution name, the type of solution is unmanaged, single component, et cetera. And I'm gonna make sure my mouse cursor is here. And then I'm gonna add this, good. So I think we're good here. Um, I think I forgot one thing. So that is one thing you can add manually. So you can do something like solution type, so just know if you forgot one option, you can always add it um, manually, okay? So you have the choice between using the tools or using pure straight up YAML code. All right, so now that I've unpacked the solution, the next thing then is um, getting it into my source code control repository. Unfortunately, there's no magic pill for that one. And you have to use a um a script that is available on github from um from microsoft right it's on the power platform github where you can download and run some git commands to get those actual files that were on on packed here into the actual repository okay as i said no magic no magic pill for that so that's what we're doing here the other thing here now is um, you can rename your pipeline. And I do suggest you rename it to something like source code 
um, or something like get source code, right? And that's it. We can save this and run it. So you can do your commit messages. So keep in mind that uh, this is also part of the whole tracking of the pipeline execution. Um, hopefully everything else is fine. Uh, we can commit it to the main branch if we want or to a different branch. It's up to you how you want to do that. Now the job is queued and hopefully everything else uh, will run. I think I know one thing that's going to fail because I did not do that with my um, with my application user on the Power Platform side. So I'm going to have to go back and assign per uh, permissions to it. But I think that's the only thing that's going to fail. I expect it to fail now that I think about it. But as, we, as you can see, the job is initializing here. And the first thing it's doing is it's downloading the Power Platform installer, installing those, those things. And um, hopefully it's checking out the code, but I do expect it to fail. Uh, that's exactly what happened. So here is where it failed. And it's telling me that I don't have, um, I don't have the permissions a configuration issues, preventing authentication, check the error message. So we can go down here somewhere and say, um, and see what that is. Application, blah, 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 invalid uh, client, original exception, in invalid, invalid client secret provided. So most likely my secret is not working and we know where to fix that. We can go back here to, um, to the uh, project settings and go back to service connections and development environment and um, edit this. And most likely this secret is what's bothering here because I probably don't have the right one. So I'm gonna come back over here, go to um, certificates and secrets. I'm gonna delete this one. And I'm going to just add a new secret. OK. Now, I can do this uh, very liberally because obviously I have the rights to do this. But in a business setting, this is something you're going to have to work out with your IT team or your systems administration team. So I don't want you to give get the idea that you can just nilly willy go through doing this kind of stuff you have to work these things out with your admin team. Okay, so I'm just gonna call this uh, PA secret. And I'm gonna actually say it expires in 24 months, add this, and then copy this thing. This is, the, this is what you're interested in, this value. If you, don't, if you don't copy this value, if you refresh this page, it's gone, you're gonna have to recreate it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here, remove this, Paste this one, I can see it, compare it to the other one, make sure it's okay, and I save that. But I had said that um, something else was off, so let's go and correct that. If I go to my Power Platform Admin Center and I go to um, uh, Application Users on the Settings, uh, here we are, Users, Application Users, and here's my Power Platform Registration, um, I can. I have to actually choose the security role that it belongs to, and right now I don't have one, as you can tell. Uh, just to make this quick, system administrator, save this, and um, I think that basically allows me to do what I need to do. Okay. Um, and then uh, that's it. I'm gonna rerun this pipeline. Hopefully, it will work, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so here's my pipeline, and I'm going to run this pipeline again. Okay. It's good when things fail. I, you know, for once, I am not actually, um, I am not actually shy about things failing. I hate perfect demos for one reason. You don't get to understand what happens and what changes you need to make and what you really need to focus on when it comes to, um, when it comes to uh, you know the things that you will face, so it, I'm glad it failed. We fixed it. Hopefully, we know now that um, that was the issue. Hey, Mariano. 
How do you usually handle the challenge of, uh, you know, secret expiring? Do you have like a, something that gives you notifications, especially if you have like pipelines that are continuously deployed? Yeah, that's a good question. I, um, so the, what we've done internally is we actually have our IT team monitoring these things and there's some monitoring tools on Azure that allow you to, um, to, to do that. Uh, but there's not again there's no silver bullet to it because obviously the whole intent that microsoft has is to make sure that um that everything is you know your security is tight all around okay. um so you would have to just go back and update it so right now it says what command exited with line one what is this main does not match any well, I don't understand what this is. Phil, push to RAS, McCormick Visual Studio, CI pipelines, get CI pipelines. I'm not sure what this is. Um, so let's go back here to the pipeline and edit this once more. Might have been some weird character that got involved. So let's see, uh, git commit all changes, config, automatic build, check out main, now commit solution in it. Echo push code to new repo. Changes push origin. I mean, okay. I don't know exactly what this is. This looks like the normal code that I always use for this, but not sure what that is. Um, the bottom line is you end up here on repos with um, your source code being pushed into this repository. That is one step. Okay. Now the next thing is um, once you're done with setting up your your source code pipeline, this is the pipeline that um, that typically you will use then to bring the source code from one place to the other. Now, uh, not a caveat, uh, and I think this is something that Victor had actually mentioned. They, there is, when you actually bring a solution, it's going to bring all the solution files with it. So keep in mind that an app is not stored as the individual JSON files, it's stored as the, as the as the actual MS app. And an MS app is nothing more than a zip file, to be honest, right? If you rename it to zip, you can actually see the content of that MS app file. So one thing you can do is you can, if you want to get to the point of just pushing the actual application files for the app, the JSON file, then you got to run one more unpack on that, uh, on that actual MS app file that will extract those, um, those individual files and um you know and that's what you would choose in 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 essence to move to the repository now i like to store all the solution files i don't like to individually uh single out anything i don't like to single out the ms app versus the flows versus the um versus the uh you know the let's say the chatbots whatever it is that i'm using because Typically, what's going to end up happening is if I have to move that solution with another pipeline to QA, I want all the solutions files in it. Okay. I don't want just the app. I want all the solution files. So that's one thing that I, I caution you about uh, against. But keep in mind that it, when, when you have the repo, remember yesterday, we can clone this repo um, to basically uh, get the files onto my hard drive. We saw that yesterday and start working with anything in Visual Studio Code uh, with the Power, um, Power Platform command line interface. So that's how I would continue any development on that, right? Then I would use the Power Platform command line interface to repack all those files, uh, especially the MS app file, and then push that back into my repository by doing, in, by doing a check-in. So it's not only the Power Power Platform CLI files that you got to install or the extension that you got to install. You also have to install your um, your source code control extensions in Visual Studio Code to communicate to your repository. Okay, so you can check that stuff in when you're done. Um, now, uh, I think we are at five minutes before three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Victor cordially invite me back to do a uh, last uh, push to do the um, the you know, to see how we move solutions between environments, in particular between development and QA. 
And then finally, how we create our release pipeline to move code from QA to production. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it here. Um, hopefully, uh, this at least was clear. But by the, by the next uh, by the next episode when we come back, I'll probably see what this issue is with the pipeline and show you the pipeline running. I don't want you to think that um, that you know we don't want to address things here. So I'll show you that. And then we move forward with the rest of the things that we have um, to cover. Uh, but I, you know, unfortunately, we run out of time. So, but hopefully, you got the overall picture of what we intend to do here. Um, you get a, a, an understanding of the power um, power platform build tools that are part of um, the Azure DevOps environment. Uh, you get an idea of what needs to be done to get solutions um, out of uh, power platform into the DevOps uh, source code control repository, although you, that part did not quite work um, in the end. I got to go back and review that script. No big deal. We'll fix that. And then you guys will, uh, will get a pretty good picture on what else needs to be done, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Now that that was really good. I, I especially like how you walk through the YAML and all the details. And I think for the folks here that that are seeing it the first time, um, I I hope you understood the um, the tools that are at your disposal. I mean, it's not like Mariano was was creating the YAML by himself, you know, step by step, but uh, Azure DevOps was giving him some of the instructions. And as he was plugging in his yeah. own values, it would build the YAML for you. So that is, I think that is the important takeaway. Yeah, we'll see uh, some of these problems. Uh, there is one area that I struggle the most is the source control. Every time I do it, I get the same error usually. Uh, but uh, other than that, I think it was really good. Yeah, we should do another one maybe to to review mm -hmm. the push. But I got a question myself to you, Mariano. How do you usually handle the trigger for these pipelines? Is this something that uh, maybe an admin just fires it off for you? Or do you tie that back to potentially? I've seen um, people talking about uh, creating a, a flow that triggers the pipeline. Um, how how do you usually how does your company handle it uh, specifically? Yeah, that's that's a fairly complex question because it all depends on um, the development methodologies adopted. So Agile says do this, right? But then everybody starts to refine and 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 actually build what works for them. So okay. normally what we have is a uh, check in. Uh, uh, check-in time that we we we've established by Friday two o'clock p.m. In fact, uh, tomorrow two o'clock p.m. This time, uh, everybody should be checking in code, okay, for the for the day. If you're not done with your development, obviously that code remains unchecked. But every code that's checked in, that's exactly what we will um, we will upload into our solution, run our pipelines to 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 build that solution and deploy that to QA. Okay, so um, we have uh, we have established a cutoff time because obviously you have multiple developers working on stuff. So we want to make sure that everything is um, tidy by a certain time during the day, and that takes the pressure off the developers. It takes the pressure off the QA team. And um, what we do is we have an automatic uh, pipeline that runs at a certain time after that, so 20 minutes okay. later. And and that's um, that's how we do it. Yep. So so for QA, it's pretty much on schedule. But then for production, you might have your own production deployment schedule, or maybe correct because that's, that's a whole that's a whole different team. So uh, people that push uh, stuff into production, they have their own pipeline that they manage. And all we need to do, all our managers do, is to make sure that they um, they give the green flag that everything is being tested, uh, QA approved. And we have a formal sign-off process internally on on uh, code that's been approved for production, and then we push it out, you know, with a separate pipeline for that, a release pipeline. Awesome, awesome. That is yeah. that is that is great. So, Ariano, uh, Ariano, Mariano, I'll, I'll coordinate with you when we can do that other lesson. Of course, we'll mm -hmm. check into your availability. I do have uh, for next week. Let's see who we got here. 
presenting on the Thursday. Maybe we can do yours uh, before Thursday. But we have yep. data migration have package as part of ALM. That is next Tuesday with Will Hemsey. So he's going to talk about the data migration part uh, of these pushes. But let's see. I mean, we'll, we'll talk offline and then I'll let everybody know if we are joining before Thursday. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much, Mariano, again. And thank we'll, you guys. We'll chatting. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have a you. great Thursday it. and Love great weekend. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.